My name is Zachary Espinoza. Um, I'm here to talk to you about Guitar UV. I'm going to go over a uh, slideshow and a presentation, and hopefully, um, by the end of all the knowledge I give you about UTRGV, um, it will help you uh, make your mind of what university you want to attend after you graduate from high school. So, let me get started. Um, so, uh, again, I'm representing the University of Texas Rio Grande Valley. Uh, you probably haven't heard of us. Um, but we have nine total locations throughout the Rio Grande Valley, okay? Um, again, if you're not aware of the Rio Grande Valley is, it's actually in the southern tip of Texas, uh, way down south, okay? <laughs> uh, we have nine locations with two main campuses, one in Enneberg and one in Brownsville. They are all around an hour apart from each other. Uh, you're probably wondering, like, okay, why, why are they so far apart? Um, that is because once upon a time, each uh, campus with its own university until 2015 when they merged together to become what is known as the University of Texas Rio Grande Valley. Um, you'll find uh, pretty much the same um, core classes in both Edinburgh and Brownsville. Brownsville does have more medical um, studies and Edinburgh has um, pretty much everything, right? You can find engineering in there as well, uh, but majority of your medical uh, studies are going to be located in Brownsville. Um, the Brownsville architecture um, is really beautiful. Um, it's more like a Mexican heritage architecture. Um, Edinburgh, a um, little bit more modern. Uh, <laughs> um, majority of students actually take classes in Edinburgh, around 70%. Um, I actually attended e charge being I'm an alumni, and I took all my classes in Edinburgh. Um, I was a tour guide for the Edinburgh campus, so my knowledge about like uh, all the locations in Edinburgh are pretty vast. Uh, I have a lot of knowledge to give you. Um, in Brownsville, like I mentioned, 
Um, it's a smaller campus. Um, again, like the rest of the students will take classes in Brownsville, like a small percentage. Um, it is a smaller campus, but it's just as beautiful as Edinburgh. Um, Edinburgh has a lot going on. Um, I do love um, the architecture for both. All right, so I mentioned I have nine locations at the Rio Grande Valley. The other sub locations are the sub are are smaller. Um, and then what's fun about the about the sub locations is that students are able to travel to them uh, for free. Um, we have what is called a a fleet of shuttle buses uh, called Volcano Express. Um, majority of our students are from the Rio Grande Valley, um, so students are able to park in these sub locations and then they take buses to our main campuses, Annenberg or Brownsville, depending on what side of the valley you know, each campus is on. Um, students are also able to take classes in both Annenberg and Brownsville. Um, if you see on the bottom right, we have a charter bus. Uh, that charter bus, uh, all, all they do um, all day long is go back and forth from Annenberg to Brownsville. Each bus, even the smaller buses, have a Wi-Fi, they have uh, air conditioning, which is really important in South Texas. Um, they also have uh, comfortable seating, and outlets to charge your mobile devices, right? So we give the tools to students if, um, if they choose to travel, um, they could do their homework, they could catch up on assignments, or if they want to, they could just take a nap or watch Hulu or Netflix. It's really up to them, but we do give them the, uh, uh, the option to do so. So a little bit about our current Bakkeno class. Um, we're actually 32,000 Bakkeno strong. What a record-breaking new class, all right? So that's our freshman class. Uh, freshman class, I believe it was around 30, uh, 3,300, I mean 5,300, right? So around 5,300 students are brand new to the university. And the year before that, the record-breaking class was 5,000, right? So as you can see, the university is growing. Um, when I was a tour guide for the Edinburgh campus years ago, it was nothing like this. I never imagined um, the university to get this big, which is good, right? The more students we have, the more funding we're able to get, and more funding we're able to get, uh, the more opportunities we can give to our students, where would, whether it be programs or majors um, or other stuff we can offer to students to make their life easier and better at UTRGV. Uh, we're number one in Texas for social mobility, meaning that um, a degree from UTRGV, they're able to move up a social and economic class. We are a, we are a super Hispanic serving institution. That's a fun way of saying that majority of our students are Hispanic. I believe 89, around 89% of our students are Hispanic. Um, like I mentioned, um, the university is growing, right? Um, and slowly by slowly, we have, we're getting more students from outside the valley um, coming to UTRGV, which is making up most of our population. Uh, we're the largest recipient of grant funds in the state, top 35 most secure campuses in the state. Um, sorry, top 35 most secure campuses in the nation. Uh, we are pretty, really secure campus. Uh, I believe we're number three in Texas, uh, most secure, um, which is good. Um, again, we're in South Texas, we're uh, was a, with border towns, and yet we have a really safe campuses compared to other campuses in the state of Texas. Uh, top three best colleges for your money, right? Best bank for your buck. Um, we have the affordable, um, affordable tuition, and students here at UTRGV, are able to graduate with little to no debt. Uh, with UTRGV is number one in the state of Texas for our lowest average student debt. 70, we have over 75 undergraduate programs, that's for your bachelor's degree, and when you include all the programs we have for our master's and doctoral programs, it's over 120. So like I mentioned, we have over 75 undergraduate degrees, and depending on what students want to study, they're gonna fall under a particular college. Uh, for example, we have the Robert C. Backard College of Business and Entre Entrepreneurship. Right? You'll find such majors as accounting, economics, finance, management, marketing, and so much more. Um, that is our business school for the university. We have a college education in P62 integration. Um, that's for future teachers, right? For people, for, for individual, for students who want to be elementary school teachers, they can do that here at UTRGV. College of Fine Arts, we have art, dance, music, performance, and theater. Another cool thing about the university for fine arts, we have what is called the Performing Arts Center. That is an auditorium that seats over a thousand people, right? Whenever we have uh, concerts going on on campus, they'll be done at the PAC, uh, Performance Arts Center, uh, shorts, PAC. Um, also too, we do, we do invite celebrities and distinguished speakers to campus to speak, and they'll do that at the PAC as well. Again, um, we're in South Texas, rich in Hispanic culture. Here, the high schools are really big on mariachi. 
Actually, you turned to be as big on mariachi. Um, we have a award winning mariachi uh, program. Um, our mariachi once played for President Barack Obama back when he was still a senator. Anyways, back to mariachi, right? Why I brought it up. Um, so our high schools here in the Rio Grande Valley are really big on mariachi and every year they'll have a competition of who has the best mariachi band. Well, they'll compete here at UTRGV. They'll use their performing arts center. Um, anyways, moving on, we have the College of Health Professions. Here you're going to find biomedical studies, which is a good prerequisite for med school. And guess what? UTRGV has a med school. Um, we have exercise science kinesiology, and also you'll find American Sign Language here in the, hall, in the College of Health Professions. Then we have the College of Liberal Arts. This college has majority of our majors. Um, you'll find um, such things as criminal justice, uh, communication studies, English, history, philosophy, political science, psychology, um, and so much more. All right, there's so many to go down the list, it's crazy. Um, College of Sciences, we have biology, chemistry, uh, marine biology, um, uh, physics, and sustainable agriculture and foods and systems. Marine biology, right, that's a big one. Um, I say a big one because um, like I mentioned earlier, uh, we have seven sub-locations throughout the Rio Grande Valley, one of them being at SPI, South Padre Island. So you'll find a lot of our marine biology students there. Honors College and School of Nursing. We have a nursing school here at UTRGV, a really good nursing school, if I may add. I say it's good because over 90% of our students get their certification at the end. So in other words, we have an over 90% passing rate for the School of Nursing. And if you Google um, the national average, you'll see that our average is higher than that, right? But it is really competitive, super competitive, right? Um, you need a high GPA to get in, right? Lowest GPA I heard about getting in was a 3.8, right? Around there, something really high like that. Um, for those of you who don't know what GPA is, uh, it's pretty much a grade point average. When you come into UTRGV, when you come into any university, you're gonna start off with a 4.0, right? Every grade you get that's lower than an A, your GPA goes down. So if you get a B, it goes down a little bit. If you get a C, it goes down further. If you get a D, it goes even further. And if you get an F, of course, you know that even more. All right, so these nursing students pretty much had nothing but A's, right, when they got in. So if you want to become a nurse, you can become a nurse here at Utah V at an affordable price. Um, but just know it's really competitive. So you got to do your best in your other classes. Um, we have a College of Engineering and Computer Sciences. Um, we have seven different engineering programs. Um, I get asked a lot, Mr. Espinosa, what is UTRGV be known for? I can't really give you an answer because we have so many good things, like School of Nursing, like I just mentioned, with a high percentage of passing students. Um, I, can, I can say our Performing Arts Center, right? A lot of students um, in the College of Fine Arts, they use a Performing Arts Center. I can, I can say that as well. Um, I can also mention the Business School, right? Uh, we've had professors recognized by the White House and also the state of Texas, right? I could name so much, it's really hard to get a definite answer what UTRGV is known for when we have so much to offer. So let me talk about class formats. Due to the pandemic, we have to get creative uh, for students to get an education in a safe environment, right? So first we have the online asynchronous classes. This is fully online. Right, um, students will get a syllabus online and then they'll get uh, from the professors going to put out assignments and, and homework and exams due at certain times of from throughout the semester. Right, so this is fully online, this is online asynchronous. Uh, this is just back in the good old days, just normal online classes, right? <laughs> um, so, we, so we kept that. Also, we added online synchronous. This is a lot like what students are doing now in their high schools with Google Meets or Google Classrooms. Um, they'll be online, and then they'll be online at certain times on certain days for certain classes. It's exactly what we're doing here. That's kind of online synchronous. Then we have hybrid reduced seating. Part of it's online, part of it's in person. Right? It depends on the professor. The professor's going to put out uh, days and times of when to be on campus. Right? So they won't be on campus all the time. It's really up to the professor. Traditional face-to-face -face classes. This, just like in the good old days, before there was a pandemic, um, students will come to class on certain days at certain times and they'll meet with the professor. So we have that going on still at UTRGV, but it's limited. Then we have interactive video classes. Students in the classroom, professor in a different location. That's pretty fun. I've only seen it in movies and now we have a UTRGV. Um, so students will come to the classroom um, and there's probably a projector going on 
um, and the professor is either like in his office or he's at home um, teaching the class, right? So these are the five different formats we've created here at UTRGV um, in order for students to get an education at a comfortable, safe environment, right? So we still have students on Canvas, but it's not as much compared to um, without a pandemic. Uh, majority of classes you're going to find are online or either hybrid with your student. So we have a lot of services here at UTRGV that's geared towards student success. Um, first one being new student orientation, right? It's the first thing students have to go through. Orientation, right? Just like any other place. Um, this is where they learn how to be a vaquero. They'll learn everything about the university, about the programs we offer. Um, they'll meet with an academic advisor. Um, and then they'll also register for classes, right? Uh, vaquero Roundup. Vaquero Roundup is one big old party typically done the weekend before the classes start. Um, so it's all the orientation we had over the summer in one big old place. Here the students are going to learn more about the university, they'll have an opportunity to meet new friends, they'll get some free swag, win some prizes, have a good time. Um, studies do show that students who are more involved on campus graduate on time and probably with a better GPA as well. Again, so Volcano Roundup is geared towards students to learn everything about the university and opportunity to make friends. Right? The more friends you have, the more chance you are getting to be involved in campus. The Thrive Guide, Youth Central. Youth Central is a student's one-stop shop here at UTRGV. If they need to speak to registrars or financial aid, they do it at one person, right? One line, they meet with one person, be able to get their problem solved. This is really handy, right? Back in my day, when I was a student here, we didn't have this. Um, we had to wait in separate lines. So that was, um, so I remember waiting in line to talk to registrars for like an hour or two, and I would just, you know, I need to talk to financial aid, so I'd jump into another line and wait for another hour or two, right? That is crazy. Here at UTRGV, it's called Youth Central. You, you speak to one person for both problems. Jumpstart. Jumpstart is a set of summer classes geared to help students who did not pass their TSIs to be ready for the fall semester. Um, students do have the opportunity to get their classes paid for if they fill out the FAFSA the previous year. Um, the easiest way to avoid jumpstart is to pass your TSIs or be exempt from your TSIs. Academic Advising Center. This is a center in the university filled with academic advisors. <laughs> academic, advice, academic advisors, for those of you who don't know, um, they help you uh, with your classes, right? They help you pick out your classes. They'll tell you what classes you need to take so you're able to register for the, the right classes. I emphasize the right classes because is going to save you a lot of time and money when you know what class you need to take, right? So if you register for a class you don't need, you're, you know, you're wasting money, right? If class is money, you're wasting money if you take a class you don't need. Luckily here, the, the advisors are, are trained, they know what you're doing, um, so they're able to help students uh, find the right schedule. The Learning Center. The Learning Center is a tutoring center for the university. If the student's having a problem in their in math, English, science class, chemistry, whatever, you name the subject, the, there is a tutor for it, All right? Like I mentioned earlier, uh, coming to the university, you start off with a 4.0 GPA. If you're struggling for whatever class, go see an advisor. It is recommended to go see an advisor because you want to keep that 4.0 GPA, right? The more it goes down, the harder it is to find uh, internships, the harder it is to find jobs on campus because um, you want to graduate with a good GPA. So, Especially when I go into grad school, right? Because grad schools have a minimum have a minimum GPA for certain programs, and the higher your GPA is, uh, the less you have to worry about grad school or any other programs in the future, All right? So again, the learning center, tutoring. If you're having trouble, go see them. Um, the writing center, the writing center. Um, if you're having trouble with your essay, let's say you have an essay coming up due um, for your professor, um, but you're not confident in it, you feel like you're going to fail it. Go turn in your paper to the writing center. Go do it, right? They'll get back to you um, with notes and critiques so you can make the corrections needed on that essay to get that in. Counseling services. Your mental health is super important, right? The student's health is super more important to us. If the student is feeling down, depressed, homesick, it's highly recommended to go see the counseling services. It's free for students, all right? Um, your mental health is super important. Go see them, right? They're here for students. Health services, every high school has a nurse. Um, here at UTRGV, we have something similar. It's the health services. Um, they meet with actual physicians. 
uh, and if they're and it's free for them, okay. But the only thing that needs to pay for is if any labs need to be done, or any medication needs to be prescribed. But it's given at a discount price. It is free for students. Not even I can use this. So if your tummy hurts, go see them. <laughs> the Career Center. The Career Center um, is a place here on campus that would help students build a resume, with mock interviews, help them find a job on campus, and help them finish um, and help them find a job after they graduate. Right, the Career Center is here for students, uh, especially with those mock interviews, right? Just in case you've never been in an interview, interview before and you feel like you're gonna get nervous in front of somebody else asking you questions, they'll set one up for you, right? A mock interview. Um, these services are pretty much free for students because it's all part of your tuition, right? Tuition and fees. So use the services for you. You're already paying for them, might as well go see them. Especially the health services, you know? <laughs> Um, and a career center as well. And the writing center. And you know what? All of these are important. You know, all of these are just as important. Uh, especially the learning center, right? You want to keep that 4.0 GPA. Um, so we have over 250 different student organizations on campus, ranging from Greek life, interest groups, honor societies, and mentorship. Greek life. Those are your fraternities and sororities on campus. No, they're not like the movies, all right? So if you had an idea of what sororities are like or fraternities are like due to movies, you're in for a rude awakening, right? These guys are pretty cool. Um, these guys do a lot of community service and a lot of community outreach. Interest groups. There are so many clubs on campus, I can't even name them all, right? For example, you have the anime club, you have the uh, rock and roll club, you have the reading club, uh, the manga club, um, a lot of different clubs geared towards different interests. If there isn't a club that piques your interest, you're more than welcome to create one yourself with a group of friends. For example, I had a friend named Aaron. Aaron was in, an air, in a club called the Aaron Club, right? It was him and six other Aaron's hanging out playing video games. That just goes to show about the different clubs we offer here at UTRGV. Honor societies, mentorships, the mentorships, they'll pair you up for an upperclassman, um, your freshman year. University recreation, my favorite to talk about. Uh, physical health is just as important as mental health. I believe that. Um, here, University of Recreation, uh, we have two wellness centers, one in Edinburgh, one in Brownsville. The one in Edinburgh has a rock wall, has an indoor track, it has free weights, it has studios for like Zumba or for yoga or whatever they're going to teach that day. Um, there are exercise machines, there's an outdoor swimming pool for leisure, right, just splashing, having fun. Um, and there's an indoor pool uh, for actual laps, right. Um, also, you'll find what is called intramural sports, right? Intramural sports are pretty much sports that are not part of collegiate level, they're not part of NCAA. So you'll find like flag football, indoor soccer, uh, basketball, uh, soc uh, probably kickball. I've seen jujitsu, chess, and a few others. It is good to stay active, especially if you're living on campus. I say that because you have access to the dining hall, right? There is a thing called freshman 15. <laughs> I'll get more into that later, um, but University of Recreation is always good to stay active, right? It's always good. I have always, I've always uh, said or felt like, you know, if you work out, you feel good, right? Um, mental health and also physical health is important to me. Um, so I always highly recommend students go check out the University of Recreation Centers. It is part of their tuition and fees, so it's free towards you. Might as well use it. It's a lot of fun to work out too. It's a good way to release stress. Um, Division One Athletics, right? We're part of the Western Athletic Conference. 2016, our volleyball team won their championship. Um, every game for, is free for students, right? So if you want to check out a baseball game, it's free for you. Check out a volleyball game, free, basketball game, free as well. Um, if you want to try out, you would have to reach out to that coach in particular, right? So if you want to reach out, if you want to become part of the Volcano soccer team, you have to reach out to the soccer coach, right? Um, that's all I can say about that, really. Um, study abroad, just like any other university, um, will send students to a different country to take a class over there. Unfortunately, due to COVID, it's grounded, but hopefully by fall 21, we'll be up in the air again, um, traveling. Um, campus activities, there is so much to do on campus, right? Back when I was a college student, I used to hunt for campus activities. Reason being, because I was a broke college student. And a lot of these activities offer free food, right? 
Um, there are, there's always flyers all over campus of, hey, this organization is going to be on campus doing this, giving out that. Um, there's also an app, free for students, on that, on that app. It's called Cork, C-O-R-Q. Um, you can find what's going on on campus, so you go check them out. If you're not selling anything, I mean, if you're not giving up any free food, which is always the best, um, there's, they're probably selling something. So we have a picture over here. For example, there's a big sale. Um, go check it out, right? You know, like, especially when you're on the go. Uh, we do have uh, different, like, uh, restaurants on campus, uh, but sometimes the, long, the, the wait line, the line is forever, right? So you're waiting maybe 12 minutes or 10 minutes. Sometimes you're not that time because you have to go to one, you have to go to class, right? We're 15 minutes apart. You got to go. You're on a move. Um, it's always good to check out the like whatever the organization are giving out for free or selling because if you're on the go, it's the quick best thing. But yeah, so I highly recommend if you're a broke college student like I am, if you're going to be a broke college student like I am, hunt for that free food. Um, if not, um, usually some organizations are selling food. It's also at a good price. Um, I remember I used to sell pizza, like a slice of pizza for a dollar, right? That's pretty cool. Um, I knew, an, I knew an organization that would sell burgers uh, for like a couple of bucks. And, but the burgers also came with like chips and a soda and a cookie, you know, so go check it out. Again, broke college student, free food, it's awesome. Uh, so I know all this sounds great. You're like, how much is it gonna cost me? Um, so I'm gonna go over tuition. Uh, for a resident, for the fall and spring semester, you're looking at 8,917. So that's around 4,458 per semester. And for the cost of attendance, um, you're looking between 17,000 to 23,000. You're like, whoa, hold the brakes. You just told me each semester is $4,000. Like, where is this 17,000 coming from? Um, that's because the university puts different factors into the cost of attendance. Uh, for example, the tuition and fees, right? 8,117 for the whole year. Room and board, another 8,342. Room and board, is, is the housing and also the meal plan combined. Um, we have different uh, housing options to choose from, like different floor plans, um, and also different meal plans to choose from, right? Uh, the more expensive ones combined would be around 8,342. A um, little bit about housing, um, I have a slide for it, but I will let you know right now, when it comes to floor plans, the more roommates you have, the cheaper it's gonna be, right? So the less roommates you have, the more expensive it's going to be. So if you live on your own, because you want that bougie life, uh, it's going to be more expensive, right? So the more roommates you have, the cheaper it's going to be. Um, books and supplies, right? The university feels you're going to need twelve hundred dollars for books and supplies. That may not be the case. If you know how you if you know how to budget your money, um, your supplies won't be that much. We do have a bookstore on campus. Um, reasonable price items. Um, for for example, I was always on a budget, right? So I always pick those binders and, and, and spirals that were easy to go by. Also books, you can rent books too, so it won't be that much. I uh, highly recommend you rent a book before you buy it. That is my uh, suggestion. Transportation. University of Philly is going to need $1,200 for transportation. If you're living on campus, that may not be the case, right? Because you're living on campus. Um, we have, uh, you know, when you live on campus, everything's here, especially here in anywhere, right? There is a Walmart right down the street. Uh, there is uh, the, the dining hall on campus. Uh, everything is pretty much walk, walking distance. You know, we have different restaurants across campus uh, walking distance. So if you don't use your vehicle that much, you won't be using that much for transportation. Um, back what I used to do, um, back when I was a college student, I would just ride my bike to Walmart get my groceries and I had a big old backpack and I put them all in there and then just drive back. Uh, that's a suggestion. Um, also personal, right? The university feels you need $2,000 on personal items. That may not be the case. Uh, it depends um, how much you spend, right? Again, if you want that bougie life, it's going to be expensive. Um, avoid the malls, right? That's all I can say. Avoid Amazon, right? Amazon's a thing now. Um, just don't spend that much on you. But again, these are the five factors the university puts into consideration when determining the cost of attendance. So if you budget your money, you won't be spending anywhere near that. Only thing for sure you'll be spending is your tuition and fees. That's going to be 8,917 for the whole year, right? It's not negotiable. Uh, room and board is going to vary, right? Because again, this is the most expensive uh, floor plans and meal plans combined. So again, if you want that less bougie life, right, it's going to be cheaper, right? The more roommates you have, the cheaper it's going to be. Books and supplies, again, if you rent books, and get the just the basic uh, necessities, you'll be fine, right? 
transportation, if you don't use your vehicle that much, again, you'll be fine if you live on campus. Um, you won't be using that vehicle that much because everything you need is in walking distance. Personal, avoid that Amazon shopping and avoid the malls. Right? Buy factors, put in for the cost of attendance. So you're like, okay, now you told me how much it is, how am I going to pay for this, right? There's different ways to pay uh, for your tuition fees. One's out of pocket, one could be through loans, right? Loans is money you that get they, you, that will give you, but you have to pay it back after you graduate. Another thing could be financial aid, right? What financial aid is, it's free money from the government to help you pay for your tuition. Um, also, we have things called, we have different um, programs here on campus um, that will help make your life easier when it comes to paying, right? For example, we have the guaranteed tuition. Guaranteed tuition means you're locked into that tuition your freshman year. For example, tuition is 8,117. The students are locked in for the next four years, right? If the tuition goes up, they don't have to pay the increase for the next four years, right? Because they're locked in to that tuition that came their freshman year. That's called guaranteed tuition. Flat rate tuition. Like I mentioned in the previous slide, each semester is 4,458. That's for a full-time student. Full-time student, full-time student, that's 12 hours, typically four classes. If they want to take another a class, if they want to take 15 credit hours, they're paying the same as if you're taking 12 credit hours. If you want to take 18 credit hours, which is from six classes, they're paying the same as if they're taking 12, right? If they want to take 21 credit hours, which you need special approval for, they're going to be paying the same as if you're taking those four classes. So basically, after 12 credit hours, every additional class that semester is free. So it's pretty fun, right? Um, so, you know, again, if you take six, if you take 15 credit hours or 18 credit hours, right? 18 credit hours, that's more classes. Um, so if you graduate faster and not have a social life, you'll be paying the same as if you're just taking four classes, 12 credit hours. So that's flat rate tuition. Tuition Advantage. Tuition Advantage is a new program helping students pay for their tuition if they still got to pay out of pocket after funds and grants was given to them. Right. All you need to do is meet the criteria. The criteria for tuition advantage is come from a household of $95,000 or less, and they get a 19 on their ACT or a 990 SAT or their top 10%. You, for those last year I mentioned with the test scores and top 10%, you just need one of those. But you do need to come from a household of $95,000 or less. Right. So tuition advantage, again, it helps students pay for their tuition if they still got to pay out of pocket after financial aid and other grants was awarded to them. Because sometimes you'll get financial aid, but it's not enough to cover your tuition. Sometimes you still got to pay out of pocket. Maybe it's like $50, $100, $1,000, whatever. So this is going to help them pay for the tuition if they meet the criteria, if they still got to pay out of pocket after financial aid and other grants was awarded to them. Right? So it I want to clarify, it does not waive your tuition. It helps you pay, right? Nothing's get, nothing gets waived, right? It helps you pay if you still have a balance after grants and funds was awarded to you. Just meet the criteria. Um, we're, we're the largest Texas grant allocation, over a quarter of a billion dollars awarded annually. Um, that is our school code. So when you fill out your FAFSA, which opens October 1st, put us down. Right? I highly recommend you put us down, even though we're not your dream school, put us down anyways. Right? Make sure you do everything you need for us to get accepted so we're able to get, offer you money uh, Texas Grant wise. I mean, uh, Texas Grant or Pell Grant wise, right? So you're able to compare what we give you to other universities so you can help you make a better decision of where you want to get your education from. So, for example, we award you this much money with Pell Grants and Texas Grant, but the other universities aren't giving you that much, you know, it will help you, you know, knowing how much we're offering you and the other universities will help you make a decision so you know where you want to get your education from. Uh, prior to deadline is January 15th. Again, opens October 1st. Make sure you put us down, even though we're not your dream school, so you can help get a better idea of where you want to go to, go to school after uh, financial aid is awarded. All right, this is my suggestion. Um, moving on. Scholarships. Scholarships. I love talking about scholarships. All right. So we have a lot 
of merit-based scholarships ranging from 20,000 to 32,000 over the four years. So we don't give you all that money at once, right? <laughs> we spread it out throughout the four years. Uh, scholarships, free money, free money. Um, you do not have to pay it back. Uh, easy, right? Easy to apply for scholarships. It's crazy. All you need to do is go to utrgb.edu slash apply scholarships and you fill out what is called a scholarship profile. That scholarship profile consists of your basic information and four essay prompt questions. Do it. It's easy, right? And after you save your four essay prompt questions and your basic information, once you save your scholarship profile, you just apply to every merit-based scholarship UTRGB has to offer. Again, it is easy. This basic information like your name, middle name, last name, email address, address, other stuff, and four essay prompt questions, and you're able to edit too. So let's say like you, you uh, wrote down your four, four essay prompt questions, and then two weeks later, or a week later, you need to, oh wait, let me write about this. You, you could totally do so, right? You could co totally go back and edit what you wrote. It is easy. <laughs> and after you, again, you just apply for every merit-based scholarship you charge BS offer. It is so easy that 25% of our current freshmen are under scholarship. Think about that, right? Around 53,000 students we have brand new to the university, right? Brand new freshmen, three, around 5,300. A quarter of them are under scholarship. <laughs> it's crazy. It's a lot of people. Um, anyways, right? Um, this is a um, little information about our current freshman class. The average ACT was a 19. Average SAT was a 1030. 46% ranked in the top quarter, 64.5% had prior college courses, 87% um, received financial aid, and a quarter of our current freshmen are under scholarship because it's that easy to apply for scholarships. That easy, easy, easy. Moving on, campus safety, right? We have a really, really safe campus. Third most secure campus in Texas, 31st in the nation. Uh, we have one of the biggest police departments because we have nine current locations and all and we have police department in our nine camp right in our nine locations there's police on there 24 7 if i may add um they provide police escorts so if you get out of class late and you, you don't feel comfortable walking to your car or to your dorm alone call them up they'll escort you for free vehicle assistance if you lock your keys in your car like i do sometimes if you get a flat tire and you need a jump start call them up uh, we also have a lost and found um, located in the police department. Um, so you charge to be police departments, the one in Edinburgh and Brownsville, they're located next to the dorms, right? So that's more security right there. Campus Shield mobile app. This is an app free for students on your phone, and you're able to contact uh, you charge to police in a single swipe, right? So if you're ever in a situation where you need assistance and you got to be discreet about it, swipe, right? And they'll find you in any building any floor, any classroom, right? That's how accurate the GPS is. Um, you turn to be superhero project. That's our anti-bullying campaign. Uh, bullies aren't cool. They're never cool, especially if you're on campus, right? So don't be a bully. Living on campus, right? So we have housing in both campuses, Edinburgh and Brownsville. The Brownsville, we have the Casa Bella. Casa Bella is more your apartment style uh, complex, ranging from four bedroom to two bedroom apartments. Um, again, like I mentioned earlier, the more roommates you have, the, the cheaper it's going to be. Um, each, each apartment comes with washer and dryer, living room, um, kitchen, uh, fully furnished, so you don't have to waste money buying uh, your bed and your sofas and all that. It's fully furnished. Uh, Edinburgh has your traditional style dorms, right? Like you see in the movies and like you see in the bottom right picture, uh, the two, two, two bed and you have a dresser and the two desks and you share a restroom next to the dorm Next year, right? We have living and learning communities. Um, studies show that when students are surrounded by people just like them, like, you know, would it be the same major or the same program? Um, you know, it's easier for them to find um, study groups, right? So, yeah, living and learning communities ranging from uh, med schools to med students uh, to business school students to migrant students and so much more. Um, annual costs around 3000 and 6000 All right, again, like I mentioned earlier, the more roommates you have, the cheaper it's going to be. Um, but that includes your rent, utilities, internet, cable, and laundry. And when I say laundry, I don't mean we're going to do your laundry for you. Uh, we give you the tools needed to do your laundry. <laughs> like I mentioned, Casa Bellum, there's a washer and dryer each, in each apartment. Um, in the traditional style dorms, there are rooms of washers and dryers, so you're able to do your laundry. 
and I believe you're free, so no need to count your quarters like I used to do back in the day. Um, it's a $50 application fee, and I believe it's $100 deposit. The deposit may be $100, I think it's a little bit more. Um, what off the top of my head, I believe it's 100, I may be wrong. Uh, but again, so the deposit and the fee can be moved to your student bill, meaning especially for the $50 application fee. You don't have to pay that $50 when you're filling out the application. You can move it back to your student bill so you pay your, that $50 application fee when you're paying for your tuition fees. Apply by March 1st. Meal plans, right? This is, remember I talked about the freshman 15, this is where it comes from. <laughs> but luckily we have the wellness center, so be able to um, not get the freshman 15 if you choose to. Anyway, so we have affordable and flexible plans. Um, so we have plans that range from meals per week, that range from meals per semester. Um, it also comes with dining dollars. Those dining dollars are able to be used on any of our restaurants on campus. We have Chick-fil-A, Pizza Hut, uh, Sub Connection, which is like your Subway. Uh, there's also a grill for like burgers and turkey burgers and fries and all that good stuff. Um, there's sushi on campus. Um, there's a Starbucks on campus as well. So those dining dollars are able to be used towards that. Um, I do have to emphasize that with these meals per week, especially, because it's the easiest one to talk about. Um, for example, right, the first one, seven meals per week. If you only eat six meals that week, you do not get eight meals the next week, right? Meaning it does not carry over. So if you don't eat a meal, you lost it forever. So get your money's worth and eat as much as you can that week, right? Um, try not to waste any money. Uh, so let's talk about the application process, right? First thing you need to do is apply online, right? Applytexas.org, complete one essay topic. There's three to choose from, just pick one. Submit any official high school transcripts and submit any ACT or SAT scores if you have them. And it's a zero application fee, right? There's no fee for application, which is awesome. Um, a, a common misconception we have about our application is that you need to do the essay at, a, at the same time. That is false. I believe on page nine of the essay, uh, there is a portion for you to write the essay if you choose to, but you do not need to do it there right then and there. <laughs> um, submit your application. Um, if you're not done, if you, have, if you haven't thought of an essay to do, just submit your application anyways, right? That's what we need for sure. Um, so submit your application and then to work on your essay, you know, apply, you're gonna log into your Apply Texas and then you're, you're gonna go to My Essays tab, right? So on your Apply Texas dashboard, you will have all your applications and on the next tab, it's called My Essays. Click on that and you'll see you charge your beam. That's where you'll choose either one of the three and that's where you'll write it. If you've done it on Microsoft Word, you copy and paste it, all right? Um, so we need the application, the essay, and the official high school transcript to make a decision, right? But if you have any ACT or SAT scores, send them in anyways, right? Because we're test optional for fall 21. Test optional does not mean automatic admission, right? If we have your test scores, they'll help us create a decision faster. Because if you don't send any test scores, the essay is going to be very important. The essay is important regardless, but it's going to be even more important without any test scores because we don't have that much to judge um, the decision based on, based on. Um, but if you have any AT scores or dual and credit, any, anything like that, send it in anyways, okay? The more you have, the more we have to base a decision off of, um, and so it'll be easier to admit you. But we need your dual credit and also your AP scores anyways, right? So if you took any AP scores or you took any uh, classes at Laredo College or, or Costa Bend College or any other college out there, I say those too because I cover Laredo and Corpus, um, so if you took any, any college classes in any community college, make sure we get, make sure we get those transcripts, right? Because you want to get credit for the classes you took. It would also help you get admitted as well, right? And also AP, AP scores. You want to get credit, send us those scores anyways. Dates to remember. Freshman scholarship deadline is December 1st. Easy to do. Easy, right? Again, quarter of our current freshman earner scholarship. Financial aid priority deadline, January 15th. Application priority deadline, February 1st, and housing deadline is March 1st, right? What I forgot to mention, if you're coming from outside the Rio Grande Valley, so if you're coming from anywhere north of Star County, you are required to stay on campus, right? So again, this is for Coastal Bend, 
you're required to stay on campus just for one year. After that one year, you're able to branch out, you're able to um, get a lease in a different uh, complex, right? Just one year, you're required to stay on campus, just one year. And again, there are affordable housing as well, and there's scholarships too. Right? It's easy to get a scholarship, like I mentioned. Scholarship for a while, right? So these are dates to remember. This is my contact information. So if you have any comments, correct? If you have any comments, questions, concerns, hopefully not complaints, <laughs> reach out to me. Um, this is my office number, my cell number, and also my email address. I'm here for you. Okay, I'm here to make your life easier when applying to UGRGV and Transnation to become a Bagheno. If you have any questions, please reach out. Um, if you need to text me, text me. Right, that's probably one of the easiest thing to do is text. I am comfortable texting. I just won't reply after the sun goes down. <laughs> um, office, um, since there's a pandemic, I'm not traveling, so I should be here from eight to five in the office. Uh, again, cell, if you want to text me. Um, if it's after uh, the sun's go gone down, I'll get back to you in the morning. Um, that's my email address. Again, you can also reach out to me via email. Um, well, thank you guys. Um, thank you for listening in to my presentation. Um, again, my name is Zachary Espinoza. It was a pleasure presenting to you. Um, hope you stay safe. Uh, have fun out there. Um, study hard. Do your best. And go Ba Gettles. <laughs>